And welcome once again, ladies and gentlemen, to Rouge Radio. This is Reed Duffy alongside my good friend and CIS insider, Michelle Belanger. Michelle, what a week we had in CIS action. We're going to get right to it. It's Laval, the top team in the country, falling to Montreal by a final score of 17-12. to 12. Now, I know, as uh, you said just before we went on air, not overly surprising when you look at the Quebec Conference uh, this season, but any time Laval goes down, it is a big headline. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I mean, you're you're talking about a team that went the perfect 13 and 0 last last year um, on their way to winning the Vanier Cup. Actually, it was it was their first loss since um, since losing to uh, Queens in the 2009 Mitchell uh, Mitchell Bowl. So, first loss overall. They were trying actually against Montreal on Saturday. They were trying to to tie their own CIS record of 19 overall straight wins. Uh, back in, two, in the 2004 and 2005 seasons, they had won 19 games in a row. So they were coming in uh, against Montreal on Saturday with 18 straight wins. So um, in Montreal uh, with the bigger we, – we, we, we have to call it an upset. I mean, even though I said it wasn't that surprising, I mean, when a team like Laval lose, loses – it's always big news. The reason I'm saying it's not that surprising is, is people who have been following the Quebec Conference um, closely, and not only this year, in the last couple of years, Montreal's defense is phenomenal. They are nothing short of phenomenal. And leading the way um, on Saturday was, was Jonathan Pierre Etienne, uh, a, a defensive lineman, six foot three, two 250 pounds. He, he was a beast out there, let me tell you. And and a couple of a couple of stats. He forced a fumble in the game at, at a really important point in the game. But he had 4.5 quarterback sacks in the game. 4.5, and that's the second most all time in a game in the Quebec, the Quebec Conference. He's a former uh, draft pick of the uh, BC Lions in, in 2009. So what a football player, and, and he was absolutely amazing. But you're talking about a defensive unit that also has a uh, David Menard, uh, who last year as a rookie uh, found his way on the uh, first team All Canadian and uh, led the country in sacks last year as a freshman. So, so they have an outstanding uh, defense. Another, another uh, interesting thing is that uh, don't forget that Laval, Laval has not been as, as dominant this year. I mean, remember just two weeks ago. Um, they had a narrow win against uh, McGill, 12 to 4, and, and people tend to forget. But Laval, they are playing this year with, with their third uh, different offensive coordinator in three years. So, so the third time in three years that they have a new offensive coordinator, and, and, and it's starting to show. You're talking about a team last year who led the country with close to 46 points a game on their way to uh, going undefeated. Well, this year, different story. They're scoring almost 20 points less per game. They're 13th in CIS football, 13th in the country in points per game at 26.8. And they're also 13th in the country with, uh, in yardage. Uh, with 378 yards per game. So, so not your typical uh, dominant Laval team. The good news for Laval, hey, they still have the tiebreaker over, over Montreal because they had beat Montreal by 10 points earlier this season. And for the moment, they have the tiebreaker over Sherbrooke because Laval is now tied atop the Quebec standings with Sherbrooke at 5-1. and one. But uh, they beat Sherbrooke head-to-head a couple of weeks ago, big game in two weeks in Quebec City, uh, where Laval is undefeated. I believe it's 47 or 48 straight games now, dating back to 2004. In two weeks, the Sherbrooke very are tra- travel to um, Quebec City to face the uh, the Rougiard. So, hey, it, it makes things interesting in the Quebec Conference. Uh, you know, the uh, it's going to be really, really interesting to uh, to follow that conference for the rest of the season. Yeah, the stretch run really opens up now for the Quebec Conference and makes things, as you said, Michelle, very interesting. But last week in the CIS segment on Rouge Radio, I was talking to Jim Mullen, and we were going over the Montreal season so far, and we were almost describing it as close to a failure with uh, the the way Danny Machocha had not been able to institute his offense 
how he dreamed it up, so to speak, but, and, and some of the off-field problems that Montreal's had as well. But now with a win over Lavelle, you have to figure that's all been thrown right out the window. There's the highlight real win for the year. There's the program-defining win. Now, now Montreal has got to have all kinds of confidence. Absolutely. I mean, and like I said, their defense, if, if you haven't seen them play this year, uh, you're talking about a defense that held uh, St. Mary's to 10 points in interlock play. Uh, they gave uh, 20 points to, to Sherbrooke uh, two weeks ago, but uh, seven of those points came on uh, a punt or kickoff return, and uh, another seven points came on an interception return. So really the defense against Sherbrooke, um, which have a, a really, really good offense, Sherbrooke does. And uh, they held the, uh, the Sherbrooke offense to under 10 points as well. So, so with their defense, especially at home, I mean, you, if you've never been to um, Sepsum Stadium, which is the Carabin Stadium, it, it, it seats about 4,500 I, I, or close to 5,000. I believe a, a sellout is about uh, 5,100 actually, but it's a, it, it's a smaller stadium the atmosphere there is crazy, and it's a really, really loud stadium. Probably, I mean, I know a lot of people talk about Laval because, you know, they get 15, 16, 17,000 people, but, but some people might argue that it's harder to, uh, especially, you know, when emotions, you know, fly high, like, you know, a, a Sherbrooke at Montreal or Laval at Montreal, but a lot of people would argue that it's harder for um, uh, teams to go play at Montreal than it is at, at Laval sometimes. So big home field advantage for Montreal, but with their defense, they're never going to be out of a game this year. I guarantee you that. I mean, on offense, they're not, you know, clicking, uh, you know, the, like, like you said, you know, uh, maybe Danny Machocha doesn't have his, his system, you know, completely in place yet. But um, watch out for Montreal. I mean, they, they only have, we, we, with the loss, you talked about their off-field uh, uh, problems and, you know, they had to forfeit a game uh, uh, this uh uh, this week, you know, a decision by the, the Quebec Conference, their win against St. Mary's. But they're at 3-3 three and three, uh, right now because of that. But uh, watch out for Montreal. I, I, I wouldn't want to face them in the playoffs. No, definitely not now. With that added confidence, they're going to be a very dangerous team. But, Michel, they, it wasn't Laval that was the only favorite that found themselves in some trouble on October the 8th this past Saturday because Western – was in a dogfight with Guelph. They only end up winning by a final score of 33-29. to What a Saturday it would have been had Western and Laval both fallen. Western barely manages to avoid. Western, to, to me, Western is, is an interesting uh, team uh, uh, this year. As much as we say that Laval, going back to Laval, uh, their offense uh, doesn't seem to click you know, as much as it was uh, last year, for Western, it seems to be the defense. Western is giving up a lot of points. Um, you know, and it's the second time in three, for the second time in three weeks, uh, uh, the, the other team, their opponents, had a chance to win or tie the game in the final minute uh, two weeks ago against, well, three weeks ago now against uh, Laurier. Uh, they ended up winning 34-28, but Laurier had the ball at about midfield uh, with just over a minute uh, left uh, when uh, Western had a key interception to, to seal the victory. Well, the same, same thing happened uh, this week. It was actually even closer because Mike Spence uh, had an interception in the end zone in the final minute as uh, Western, like you said, ended up winning by, by four points. I mean, we, we have to, um, to their defense, I mean, I mean Western was playing without uh, – uh, starting quarterback Donnie Marshall, who, who, who has an ankle injury, and um, they think he's going to be out for for a couple of weeks now. So uh, it's going to be interesting to follow Western, but they have given up uh, some uh, some points uh, uh, this year on defense. I mean, uh, I believe they're about fifth um, in the OUA in in uh, in points allowed. So not the uh, uh, the dominant uh, Western defense that uh, that we saw last year, so far, anyways, against the uh, top opponents in the OUA. Then, Michelle, the, the rest of the Ontario Conference for the week, it started on Thursday, October the 6th, with Laurier walking all over Waterloo, 69-3, to McMaster going over Toronto, 50-14, to and then we talked about the Western-Guelph game. It seemed like favorites continued to roll 
as Ottawa beat uh, York 65 to 12 and Queens by a final of 27 to 14 over Windsor. When you look at that conference overall, it, it seems like week in week out the favorites do what they should do. It's not always pretty, but they get the job done. But at the same time, even without Donnie Marshall, Western still continues to sit at that top level. When you take a look up and down that conference, who do you see as a challenger for Western? Can Mac rise to the occasion, or is there a dark horse in that conference that could jump out at you and really make a surprise coming down the stretch? Well, I, I think you know what I think. Yo Yo is 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 the most interesting. In, I shouldn't say the most interesting. The most intriguing conference. If if you look, you know, top to bottom. Um, you know, we talked about Western. They're six and zero. They're sitting at six and zero. You know, great record. But now that they don't have their their starting quarterback and they they've had a couple of close calls, then you have McMaster at a five and one. But you know they they got absolutely hammered by Western back in week two, so so but but since then you know they've recovered, especially that they've had to play three games without uh, starting you know all star quarterback Kyle uh, Quinlan, who's now back with the the Marauders. But they're at five and one. But but can they really challenge Western because you know they 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 just got hammered by Western in week two, and then if you look at the at the, let's call them the middle teams. It's it's kind of intriguing. Windsor was four and one. Now they lose a great opportunity to to move to five and one, losing to Queens at home, uh, twenty seven to fourteen on, on Saturday night. I, I'm sure that was a really really disappointing loss for the Lancers, uh, because now with that loss to Queens, Queens is also at four and two um, in the standings. Ottawa is at four and two in the standings, but you know didn't really compete well, you know, a little bit like McMaster. Um, they really got dominated when, when they played uh, against Western. And then you have Laurier. Laurier is, is uh, who knows, who knows what, what Laurier team is going to show up every Saturday because um, they, they really struggled at the start of the season. But now it seems that they're back. They've been really, really impressive the last three, four weeks, including their loss, their close loss to, uh, to Western. Now they sit at three and three. And we were talking about Montreal, a team that I wouldn't want to face in the playoffs. Maybe in the OUA, Laurier is the team that you don't want to face in the playoffs. So, so it's, I, I think those teams, you know, three, four, five, six teams, which are all teams that are going to make the playoffs in the OUA, I think it's going to be really interesting. Talk about two teams you want to play in the playoffs. You go out to the Atlantic Conference, and St. Mary's walks over St. FX by a final of 40-16. to 16. Acadia knocks off Mount Allison 29-14. to 14. Michelle, October 22nd, those two teams will face off against one another. What a battle that will be. And I think there's going to be a lot of heads turned by the end of that game. I'm not so sure that either St. Mary's or Acadia is a team that anybody wants to play coming toward playoff time. And again, you talk about you talk about St. Mary's, a, a great defense. St. Mary's is going to win uh, a lot of games with, with their defense. I mean, I know they you know they they put up a, a lot of points, uh, but Mount Allison and St. FX hasn't been really competitive uh, yet this this year. And St. Mary's has placed twice Allison, uh, uh, Mount Allison. I mean, twice and St. FX once. They play St. FX again uh, this coming weekend. But uh, St. Mary's defense is for real. I mean, they proved that against Montreal uh, uh, and in an 11-10 loss, which has since be, <laughs> become a win uh, with the forfeit. But um, St. Mary's is strong. I mean, if they can find a little bit more offense, I think they could be uh, they could be right in there. You know, and they don't forget that the AUS hosts. Uh, the AUS champions are going to host a bowl game this year against the OUA uh, conference. So obviously, you know, playing at home uh, is going to be a big advantage. And, and Acadia is solid. Acadia is solid. You know, Acadia is kind of the team that flies under the radar because wh- whenever we think about the AUS, you know, you think about St. Mary's. They've been dominating the last couple of years. But uh, uh, don't forget about Acadia. The only lost A3. It was kind of a an ugly game uh, uh, two weekends ago, but, um, you know, played in uh, difficult uh, difficult conditions uh, in the Maritimes. But uh, Acadia is kind of flying under the radar. And if, if they get a win against uh, St. Mary's and, and then they get the tiebreaker, 
uh, a top the AUS, you know, who knows? They, they, they might win the whole thing and, and host the bowl game at the end of the season. So, uh, but, but it's definitely a two team race in the AUS between St. Mary's and Acadia. I mean, um, I don't think St. FX, I don't see a surprise coming from either St. FX or Mount Allison, uh, uh, from now till the end of the year. It would be hard to envision, but two teams that will want to challenge before the end of the year for their conference are in Quebec, and it's the last two matchups that we haven't touched on yet. It's Concordia going over McGill 39-16, to Sherbrooke over Bishops in the Mayor's Cup 38-11. to Michelle, both Sherbrooke and Concordia, strong teams, but can they challenge Laval? I know you said Sherbrooke has a shot to do it. Can Concordia jump up and surprise somebody? I don't. You, you know what, Concordia? Concordia could absolutely challenge a Montreal and a Sherbrooke. Are they, uh, you know, they lost 37 to 4 at, at Laval two weeks ago. I don't think they're there yet, but that's going to be interesting. Keep an eye on that game on Saturday. Concordia at Sherbrooke. I mean, Jerry McGrath, the head coach at Concordia, he, he does a phenomenal uh, job year in and year out with that program. Um, I know they haven't been right right up there the last couple of years, but uh, uh, they're always a team to watch. I mean, we we talked about you know Laurier in the uh, uh, in the OUA and, and Acadia in the AUS, you know teams that you don't want to face in the playoffs. Maybe Concordia is that team in in Quebec, uh, and, and it's going to be interesting. I, I think that's a game that's going to tell us a lot about uh, Concordia and where they're at. I mean, at. At the moment, they're tied with with Montreal. At three and three, so so who knows? So so Concordia is kind of that team that that is flying under the radar in in Quebec. I mean, B- Bishops is Bishops is okay. Bishops has had a, a, a couple of good games. I mean, uh, I know they lost by uh, uh, I believe about twenty points this weekend against uh, uh, Bishops, actually thirty eight to eleven. Uh, but they have good players. Their quarterback in his first year as a starter, uh, Jordan Header. Uh, has a really good season. He averages over 300 yards a game. So those are teams, you know, I don't know if they're ready to challenge a Sherbrooke, a Montreal, or, you know, even Laval, but they're certainly giving them really good games. I mean, you don't see the uh, the 65 nothing games in Quebec anymore. And what's nice about that, too, is, Michelle, after our talks in the off season about a potential tough year for Bishops, to see them come up and challenge teams, at least give – real strong games against teams. They've sort of been my, you know, quote-unquote hard luck favorite of the season, and, and monitoring their progress, it's been a lot of fun. It, it is. And, and, you know, here's a team that lost their uh, head coach, you know, Leroy Blue uh, uh, stepped down at the end, uh, you know, in the off season, and Tony Adana, you know, came back as, as, as the head coach of the team. You know, Tony's also the athletic director at Bishop. So, you know, they're, they're one of those smaller schools, you know, the smaller program that, that you love to cheer for. And, uh, you know, of course, they're going – this coming weekend, they're going to Laval on Sunday. So, you know, that could be a, a really tough game for them, especially that you know that after losing um, – to Montreal, Laval is going to come out uh, just, they're going to want to win that game badly and make a statement, but uh, Bishops is is certainly a team that has a lot of talent, so they're a team that's going to be fun to watch, maybe not this year, but in the years to come, and like you said, at least this year, they've been competitive, and they they give you a good game. All right, Michelle, we look ahead to next week, it starts on Friday, October the 14th, Saskatchewan and Calgary go head-to-head, then moving into a full slate on Saturday, October the 15th, Acadia and Mount Allison, St. FX and St. Mary's, Toronto and Windsor, Laurier and McMaster, Ottawa and Windsor, Queens and Waterloo, McGill and Montreal, Guelph and York, Manitoba and Alberta, UBC and Regina, Sherbrooke and Concordia, and then we finish the week on October the 16th with Laval and Bishops. Some interesting matchups, and we talked a bit about Sherbrooke and Concordia, but one that really jumps out to be Michelle is in the Ontario Conference, McMaster and Laurier. You were saying earlier that Laurier could be a surprise team. McMaster always perennially up in that top two, top three in the OUA. That could be a really tough game for Mac and a really good one to watch for anybody that has a chance to take a look at that. Oh, absolutely. I mean, to, to me, when I look at the schedule for this coming weekend, there's two games that, that – um, that I, I look, I really look forward to McMaster at Laurier's one, and then obviously on Friday night Calgary at Saskatchewan. But you're absolutely right. 
McMaster at Laurier on Saturday, I think we're going to know, you know, I, I, I was saying Laurier, you know, what, what, what Laurier team is going to show up, you know, on, on every Saturday. Well, we're going to have a good idea because they're hosting a really solid McMaster team on, on Saturday. So I think for McMaster, if you go to Laurier and, and you beat the team on the rise and now you find yourself at, at six and one, you have to be really, really confident, uh, you know, heading into the, uh, heading into the playoffs. Uh, with, you know, possibly if McMaster uh, beats uh, Laurier, they pretty much secure second place in, um, in, the, in the OUA. Mind you, the week after, they finish the season at home against uh, Ottawa, which is 4-2 and two at the moment. So, so two really, really big games for McMaster to, to end the season. But Laurier, if, if you beat McMaster, you find yourself at um, – at uh, four and three, and all of a sudden, you gave a good run to Western. You beat uh, uh, Ottawa a couple of weeks ago, and then you would beat McMaster. Um, you have all the momentum going into the playoffs, so that's a huge game. And, and the other thing, uh, the other game, I mean, that I'm I'm really looking forward to is Calgary Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan is another one of those. Uh, teams that, uh, you know, like a Laurier, like a Montreal, that has, has a, a kind of a, an up-and-down season. Uh, they're only 3-2 and two right now. The Canada West teams, obviously, this week, coming back after uh, their um, annual bye week on uh, Thanksgiving weekend. But the Saskatchewan got kind of embarrassed a couple of weeks ago at Calgary. I know they only lost by, by 14. They lost 38-24, to 24, but a couple of those... Uh, um, I, I believe it was two uh, touchdowns by Saskatchewan that uh, came on special teams. So not a really good game on offense for Saskatchewan. They really got dominated in that game at Calgary when you look at the stats. So they're going to want to make a statement at home uh, against Calgary. And Calgary is undefeated. Calgary, you know, we, we were talking at the start of the year, you know, how it could be not a rebuilding year, obviously, for Calgary because, you know, teams like – uh, you know, I know it's a cliche, but teams like Calgary and Western and Laval, they never rebuild, they just reload. But uh, they lost so many players, Calgary, after last year, you know, to the CFL. Uh, and also, you know, a uh, two-time Heck Crichton uh, uh, winning quarterback, Eric Glavich. But they're right there at 5-0. and oh. it's, it's pretty amazing to me. Um, they've been challenged in a couple of games. They, they started the season with two games that they had to come back and win in the final minutes. But after five, six weeks, they're, they're the only undefeated team in the country with Western. So that's a huge game. Those are the two games to me, Calgary at Saskatchewan and McMaster at Laurier, and it's going to be another, uh, another fun weekend. Yeah, it's going to be a great weekend to keep track of all your CIS football needs and a lot of, a lot of exciting games outside just those two. Concordia and Sherbrooke jumps up, and Laval and Bishops, of course, on the 16th as well. Michelle, it's going to be a great week. And once again, thank you for coming on and having a conversation with us about the CIS. Anytime. Thanks for having me. All right. Uh, my thanks to Michelle Blanger for joining me. For Reed Duffy, this has been another week of your CIS update. Thank you for listening to Roos Radio and continue to support Canadian football.